Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Gaming with Blockchain. I'm your host, A Mine U, and we will be talking about a new game today. I had mentioned it in previous uh, streams that I would like to be bringing in an additional game as we move along into the whole blockchain um, journey, the blockchain gaming journey, and this new game will be called Alien Worlds. If you've been aware of the um, movement in the blockchain games, um, then you've likely heard of this particular game. It's been making great strides since its beta launch in December 2020, just basically on Christmas. It, it, they launched their beta um, game of mining and dynamics, and it just has blown apart. So we'll really get into, get into and showcase the, the beginning stages of what that game has been able to achieve so far. And, and what's more, what's likely to be coming down the, the pipeline in a few more weeks, if not months. But prior to that, <coughs> excuse me, in order to play that game, you really, it's important that everyone has an understanding of what the NFT um, world is like and WAX, because you'll need to be using a WAX Cloud wallet um, to play on this particular game platform. And if you've seen any, seen my previous NFT uh, segment, I I recommend you review it. It gives some kind of hi highlights of what NFTs are. It it's a good resource to kind of give a refresher if if, you, if there's certain things you, you don't remember. And again, always put some notes and send me some feedback. And I, if anything, I can put a segment on that and kind of rehash. So as you're seeing right now, we're looking at the screen here, and this screen here is going to show us. The Wax Cloud Wallet. Now, everyone, if you have a, a person who is likely the <laughs> diehard <laughs> crypto enthusiast, and they will say, never put anything on the cloud. It's not your keys. It's not your wallet. It's not your coins. You know what? For the most part, <laughs> they're completely correct. But as I had said earlier, these games right now are trying to do the best to bring in as much of a, a, an audience who are n who's not familiar with cryptocurrency, who's not familiar with NFTs, and make that entry as frictionless as possible. Remove as many of the barriers. You can see right here, it, once you sign up, it's as easy as using any of these previous um, platforms that you're already familiar with from Discord, Twitter, Google, Facebook, I guess it's TikTok, I'm not familiar with all of them, um, or create your own, and that's it, email and password. If you go, when you're ready, they it is offered as well that you can remove and create your own wallet and have it controlled by you entirely without having anything within a cloud storage or at a, a non-custodial or custodial platform. That is optional, so let's, not, let's make that clear. But like Upland, it's, it's trying to make it as easy as possible, and they have done that. So I'm going to sign in here because I already have done that. I've I've started this way. Um, there's no shame in it. <laughs> you do what's e easy and comfortable for you to do so. So once you sign in you, and, you, and you're ready to go, you'll be presented with a dashboard and this dashboard shows you all the dApps, and we talked about the dApps briefly when we looked at the dApp uh, radar uh, stats. These are the dApps that are now currently within the WAX uh, ecosystem. Now we, we say, what, what is WAX? WAX is the branch or fork of the EOS main coin. So think of like a tree or a road, and I'm going to use a lot of analogies because it, uh, like you, and like many others, we're all beginners. So I can, if I can relate something to something that's comfortable and understandable, then maybe you'll, you'll grasp the the nuances a bit. So the wax is a branch. It's 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 the extension of the EOS, so the trunk. So EOS is the main trunk, and now it has a branch of wax. And wax works on the same principles like EOS, but now they're they're slowly going on their own little path and own little way. So when you open it up, you'll see to the top right it will be your name and the wallet, the wax service you're using, and the wallet that your address that you you use to do your transactions. So you're either going to buy or sell or send wax. Those are the things you want to do. You can buy wax as well. <coughs> But from my understanding, the source that we wish to buy from is not applicable for, to North America. Um, I've tried it. It would show you Moonbuy and <laughs> problematic as, 
as much as I can tell you. Uh, Simplex, again, not available to North America, so I wouldn't recommend it if you're in a North American uh, end of things. Um, the only other way I would think of it is to go through Beatrix, and that will probably be a different entirely uh, segment on that. And there's other options like um, Simple Swap, again, another segment on that as well. But uh, for the moment, that's how you can buy it, or unless you go to an exchange. And as I said, we'll we'll get to that as we go. Now, if there's anything that's not making sense, please, again, <laughs> once you review this, send me a, a tag or a, a comment, and I'll try to review it and, and answer your questions correctly. In the on the right column, you have the balance that you have in your wax that's currently in place. You can see all the tokens, as you can see the tokens here. These are tokens that are now riding under the wax ecosystem or associated to the wax gaming um, platform. So there's dust. You'll see there's uh, trillium, which we will be touching base on soon, and all the other packs that I have that haven't been touched or opened. You'll see that in your own portfolio as your portfolio starts to grow and and develop. Then you have the NFTs. These NFTs are primarily the ones that you have in your inventory. And then you have the, your staking rewards. We'll get into that at a later date. Um, that's when you can earn a bit more wax. Uh, you stake it. They, they're, they're creating a new tokenomics when it comes to or DeFi. And you've, you've probably been hearing a lot about that as well. Um, I won't get too much into that because that, that is quite uh, complicated. And this is generally for newbies. The news, what's happening here. Um, if you can catch what the latest uh, updates that the platform is doing. Uh, this is the ETH bridge, which is again related to the whole staking and DeFi uh, mechanism. You can see the DeFi element here. If you are inclined, and again, if you're really, really knowledgeable, definitely dig into it. If you're still new, I wouldn't recommend touching this anytime soon until you really become comfortable and understand not only just the benefits but the the potential risk that could be associated here. Now what I want to make sure they understand WAX is the main holder of a lot of the um, how would I say not just the not just the games but a lot of the NFT um, markets, a lot of the NFT uh, designs and projects and catalogs. They're the main holder of that. So when you sign into that, you'll have the large database that's of volume that's available. But when you look at the Wax end of it, the Wax Cloud, which is this element here, you're looking at the assets that you have at the moment. If you now want to look at the broader library, you want to now s go to a, what's called Atomic Hub. And this is where we, we, it's an extension now of the assets that are from your wallet. So you have the, the Wax Cloud wallet, which is your wallet that stores your assets and your NFTs. But then you want to head to, and I'll have all these in the show notes, the Atomic Hub, which is now like a shopping center, the marketplace. or and as I said, if you go through the NFT um, video, you'll see there's other marketplaces as well throughout different uh, blockchains. But since we're focusing on m mostly EOS or and WAX games, then I'm showing you primarily the WAX um, ecosystem uh, marketplace. And there's others as well. And we'll get into those as we go. But right now, again, just bringing in everyone on the same starting point, same baseline. So as I'm in the marketplace now, I can scroll through a whole list of different uh, catalogs and different markets and different different businesses, either different artwork, different games. Uh, we had Dead Mouse here, which is the uh, DJ. They had launched not too long ago, so you can go through their their series of, of information that's in the bottom uh, left column. Uh, you can definitely scroll down and see other artists. Artari has their their listing of cards that they released as well. And then we'll scroll some more. Um, different styles, different reasons of why their projects are in place. You could do your research. You, 
you know, find out something you like, you can go back and go, okay, well, what's the programs about? What is their catalog about? You can see the various price points here. You can see the, the different styles. So if we're looking at this page, it's just no selection at all, just a random open uh, page of, of NFTs, you can see various styles, various projects, um, the reasoning behind it, if it's the game or is it just artistry. Uh, I will show you some art as well, and we'll get to a few there. Again, everyone has their different tastes, and these are ones now, as you can see, it says only verified. So there's two layers of verification. The ones, the second verification means that they have, they're on the ones that are getting listed, and they're shown in the first list. If you want to see others that are not on the verified list, you can turn this off, deselect what I had have given, and then you'll scroll down. So you will see differently the images that um, no longer are part of the verification. So this is a chess chessman art and they're creating their own style of NFTs. And they're not verified, but again someone we may be willing to purchase um, particular of these NFT styles and these NFT assets to each everyone has a different taste, right? This is what the market's about. So let me show you another one here. And I'll probably do one. Uh, so here's one from the Upland, um, how do you call it? Upland Players Group, and there's several others. And they're creating their own, everyone can do their own style of artwork, their own uh, image pieces. So you have a few uh, elements from players from another game that are doing stuff for their own business, if you if you will. Um, they have different style mechanics, and this is one here that I want you to, you know, take note of, because we're going to be using this as a, a starting point or something I had done here. I, I apply the same kind of logic, but I did some edits to it, um, and I'll explain why. So if you keep that as a, a snapshot, you'll, you'll see how that uh, pans out later. So that's one. Then you, if you scroll down, if we do another up, and someone had done a Upland Hotels and a nice little booklet uh, of different areas. So you know, you can again, it's, it's, it's something that's entirely, entirely unique, not something you'll see everywhere, but this is the marketplace for it. This is where you will uh, come in to shop for your items or to sell your items. Now that being said, we now understand that this is the marketplace. So you have the you have the cloud wallet, which is storage of your your assets, and then you have the shopping place, the marketplace, the place that you come in and you scout and you look. So I'm going to log in here and it's going to ask you to log in how. So you can see you have different variables. These two here, just because it's showing up, are your own personal wallets. These are the wallets now that are not on the cloud. Those are wallets that you, if you want, you can you can set up and you can have your assets store there as well. But I have, I, like I said, I started, like most people, I started with the cloud. I, I now learn a bit more on the anchor and I, I'm currently using both. So now I signed in, and you can see from here it has my the wax wallet that I'm using. It has my balance. If I go back to the other cloud, it has my balance. So they're parallel to each other. Now, because we're here, I want to show you Alien Worlds because that's where we're heading. This is where this is the game assets um, that's on the marketplace right now. So you can see there's different categories. There's arms, uh, tools the crew, your faces, and land. These are things that, depending on how much you want to acquire, are necessary in order to enjoy the game. So if you don't have any land, all you need and what you're giving with is a, a avatar, or a crew, 
the who is going to represent you. <laughs> it could be, um, we'll show you some, uh, where is it, crew? Click crew. There we go. You can show you uh, the personnel that you will have for you to represent you as a player. So it's like a block explorer. My block explorer is a seahorse. This block explorer or this avatar could be your alien. It could be a Nordic. It could be, um, uh, I think, a little green man, if I'm not mistaken. It's here. So here, so here they are. They have the. You have the faces, so they're called the faces. So you have various there. You have a robot, um, and I think that, that's it. The green alien. I thought it was one more, but it, I usually don't even see them when I select, so I <laughs> it's hard to say. Um, but these are your, your players that you can select for yourself. After that. You have the the crew that's going to go into battle, and then we'll get into the battle scenes li uh, details later. You have the arms, which is going to be the, your weapons. You have the tools, and these tools are going to be used for mining and the, the the land that you're going to mine on. So, what is this? What's the premise of Alien Worlds? So you can see here, there's all these little island uh, icons of land that you, you could that you could buy. They had to sail a couple of months ago to buy land. And in order, to, when you buy land, then you will be able to mine that land and gain gain the resources. And the resources are, is trillium. It's a token called trillium. So I'll go, if I go back now to my assets, I remember I was saying that wax is a splinter of it. So trillium is another splinter. And now if, uh, I have a collection. I I have some land, and on that land I I'm mining it. But also other players are mining it. And then I we get an allocation of what's been mined over to um, every each person's wallet asset. So what does that all mean? It means that you can grow your mining uh, volume if you want. You could attempt to buy more land and expand your land resource and land portfolio. But you can see right here some of the land is quite, quite pricey. Um, the lowest I heard was about 300 US dollars. So let me see. No, no, actually it's now risen. It's 381 ish. And you can see how the price has changed. I don't know if, I don't know if you caught that. And it, it, it is one of the, the, the things that has been quite lucrative uh, because it's definitely a very, very limited supply. And we'll touch on that just in a moment. So we're going to click right now on Aliens. What is Alien World? Alien World is a metaverse, like um, like Upland. It's using land logic, land being a limited resource. You want to be able to uh, secure it. You want to be able to um, utilize it, what it can do. And with Alien Worlds, they're offering the ways to mine on it, in which then you gain Trillium, which I had shown you. Then you can do battles. And those battles later on will turn into the option to gain prizes and gain more trillium as well. So because they know everyone wasn't going to be able to buy land and only mine from that point on, but then how else can they gain more prizes? And this is one of those other ways where you, they will be able to go into battle. Um, going into battle and, and earning trillium, this is the, the, the phases that are, are currently in place. They're looking that there's six planets, so they created six planets, six planets that actually exist, by the way, so they've done some homework. There are six planets that actually exist. There is Veliz, Narun, Niri, um, Magar, uh, have, what did I get, Aiki, and I think I caught them all. If I missed one, I would have to re go, go back. So. Belize, Cavian, and Cavian. So there we go. So those are six planets that are within the Federation of Alien Worlds. So you are playing Alien Worlds, you have six planets in which to choose. If you don't have any land, you can go and mine anywhere in terms to try to gain some children and build, build your portfolio. You also have a chance to win and retrieve NFTs. These same NFTs that I showed you earlier here, not land, the, the land NFTs won't be available, but you can receive a avatar, you can receive 
a crew. You can receive any tools that are here. You can also receive any weapons if you want to try to fight, uh, fight in the game. So you are mining. You're you're going to gain trillium, increase your your NFT portfolio. The, the trillium, and again, we'll get into some stats about the trillium. The trillium is on an exchange as well, so it's something that could be traded off chain as well as on the game at a, at a later date. So it can't be traded in the game just directly, but it has been able to be traded on an exchange itself. So that's a different, again, a different dynamic that a lot of the blockchain games are now leading to. So that you can trade, you could trade the assets that you earn within the game itself. Now, where does this lead? It leads to the fact that as the the, the pool and as the activity of each planet gain, grows, the whole point is that the planets now they will eventually run themselves. So they're looking at a DAC system and a DAO system. So DAC, D-A-C, meaning decentralized autonomous communities, and then DAO, decentralized autonomous organizations. They want to get to the point where every planet is an independent unity and they're managing how they they transport or distribute their trillium. They manage how they deal with their NFT distribution. They're managing um, the input of maybe any other game structures, any other elements within the game. There's other phases that are be coming through. So you can see there's if you look through it, the, the up land upgrade to do to allow for terraforming. Uh, planetary DAO full powers. There's a lot of, of features that are be coming through eventually as time rolls out. They're also into DeFi and collectible digital item and items meet. So there's a transition of how the landowner and the miner start to participate. Now I know this seems like a lot, but again, this is the beginning, and this is why I'm trying to um, make sure that we're we're getting at least a baseline here. And because it, once I, I get into the game, then you'll be understanding a bit of the features some more. So these are all NFTs as we discuss. This is the 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 game elements. We're gonna. Sh I'm just gonna give you a quick glance of what this means in terms of the gameplay and what what we want to watch for. So I'm going to show you now the guide. If I hope I'm showing the right image. No, that's not going to be the right image. Oops, did we have a delay? Yes, we did. Yeah. Okay, so there we go. So right now we you can, we'll see as well. There's be, there's five rarities within the game. You have your abundance, abundance, which is the ones that are everywhere easy then you have your commons so that the abundance and the commons are a slightly different color and gray then you have the rares which are the slightly blue then you have the I believe the legendary which is like the little purple and then you have the mystic which is a nice gold and I may have gone that in reverse so we'll see in a moment those are the different rarities that, that come along and of course the higher the color range the most difficult it is to, to achieve so what is alien worlds in in terms of play so this is what we're going to do right now and this is not where i want to be we want to be here we're going to play and earn so welcome back there so like i said we had to do a little bit of a uh, little adjustment here um you will find if you're a Mac user that the game generally plays a lot better on Chrome than it does on Safari, except for this ex particular in situation here, which is un unusual. This time Safari is doing a better job uh, than Chrome uh, when it comes to the gameplay. So we'll, pop, we'll get into it right now. I'm on the screen where it's the beta alienworlds.io. It may have may work with you for play alienworlds.io. Uh, again, I'll put it in the show notes, and I'm going to log in. I'm going to log in the same way for my Wax because I am. I already have a Wax account. It's going to ask me to log in. Any transaction you do, anything you do in Wax, is always going to ask you for approval. So it's also keep that in mind. And because remember, it's a transaction. It's something that's happening on the chain, and it's making a request to say, Can, "Is this exactly what you're looking for?" 
Now, what you're looking at here on this interface, this is the interface that's going to show you the, the it's like your control panel. You're now looking at, at the settings of the control panel that your, your player or your avatar is going to do. And as I had mentioned, this is something that's well designed. These features may change, so if and when you're ready to get to it, don't be surprised if something does look slightly little different than what it was before. This is now the name that you will have to sign up for. It only allows for four characters. It will show your wallet. This is the settings. If you want the music on or off, I usually turn it off. This is going to be the bag that's going to be within your mining tool. So right now you're allowed three mining tools. And what does mining mean in this game? If you're, again, using, I'll apply the analogy of a traditional miner, a geologist, and you're going to a particular land or area and you've surveyed it, you're going to then try to bring the best tools you have or the most appropriate tools you have for the terrain that you're going to mine. And you're assuming that you'll be able to mine the resources that are there. Same logic, same principle in terms of what's going to be in your bag. What is it you're going to be able to carry to, to this particular mining area? And the maximum you can carry for a miner that they've situated is three. Now, what's it mean in traditional mining? If that's for traditional mining, but what's it mean for blockchain mining? Well, again, if most people are aware, blockchain mining from Bitcoin meant the computer, computer, computable power, computation power. How the how your computer mm -hmm. c harness their resources mm -hmm. to solve a problem or solve a solution or solve a algorithm. This is the same thing that's happened. They've generated random algorithms. You're applying the best mechanics to to uh, to the resources challenges that are presented. So you're you're mining with your computer, but the but instead of using the heavy resources that are from the the Bitcoin era or continually the Bitcoin era, it's spread out a bit more using the resources just your, your general CPU. Nothing more than that, nothing to drain the system, and by, ch and by chance, so we'll get into that just in a moment as well. So I have my inventory, I ha inventory, I have my staking. Uh, managed lands will, and Thunderdome, those are features that are coming again. So like we showed you on the earlier uh, web page, there was area where they have terraforming and all those other options. Those are later down the line. So what's staking? I'm t whatever I mine, I can stake to the pl to a planet that I like. Right now, I st I'm staking to the planets I uh, on the plants, uh, or yeah, the planets, because pl my land is associated to a planet. So I'm staking to planets that are where my land resides, uh, for the m f f at this moment. So I have in inventory, I have twelve thousand tr trillion, and I'm currently staking ten thousand. I, now this is not, th these are two separate values, so it's 10,000 already being staked in land, and I have 12,000 now in my pocket, just like in Upland, I had my purse and I had my, my get to be earned, so this is what I've now mined, this is what's come to me, and because I have land, this is what I received in commission, but from that, I've taken a portion, I put it towards the s decentralized DAC unit that's going to be formed later to uh, res reserve my writing or governance um, input, if that makes sense. I'm buying my seat at the table to say, okay, well, I want to assure that, or have a, or a voice to say that this is the, the, the direction I'd like to see happen with this particular planet. So that's what staking is generally, no matter where the game is, um, and this is what it, it shows you here. So this is this is where we are. I'm going now to click mine. I have already cl maximized my mining session prior, just so that we can show you what's going on uh, here in the in the mining field. So I am going to now show you some of the guidelines. So remember the guideline that was on the previous uh, atomic marketplace. So I said, okay, take a snapshot, remember that, because I'm, 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 I'm going to use that as a template to enhance some details here. So as you can see, each of these areas showcase a area of calculation. There's three points that you want to recall, and each point 
is important because the numbers will di dictate how much power you can mine versus the um, the amount trillion may or may not have. So it's important that we look at the numbers and we can see that the top right numbers on each card represent now your mining reward. What are what's the chance of you receiving a a, a percentage of the pool of trillion that's sitting ready to be uh, retrieved? So, of course, the higher the number, the better, <coughs> but that that also depends on other factors as well. So, the land is always the multiplier, and the other numbers are the your tools. So each number then you add to it. So we have a one, a seven, and a one that equals nine. The n the nine times one still nine. So I, there's a nine percent chance of receiving the mining pools uh, out of everybody mining. So remember, it's not just you mining. The game's like Upland's going out 24/7. So there's a nine percent chance of you receiving some trillium. From that calculation, if we go clockwise except for the center, we'll get to the center later. We're now looking at NFT chance. These, are, This is the odds, again, with the whole random pool and everything else that's in place of you receiving an NFT. These NFTs are, like I said, the tools, the 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 crew, the weapons, excluding land. What are the chances that you will receive an NFT? So, again, using the land as a multiplier, adding the three other cards, will give you 18.7% chance, again, out of the mass pool of people m mining at the same time at various locations. So it's all algorithm and all calculated in that structure. So people say, well, that's 18%, that's really good. But it's 18% out of everybody <laughs> um, on that particular location, on that particular planet, depending on how much NFT has been allocated there. The bottom left now is the proof of work. How hard would it be for your system now to make these calculations? And of course, then, like all the numbers, the higher it is, the better, especially too when they open it up for um, mobile devices. Right now, you, can, it's, you can't play on, on a phone. Some people have gone away playing it on, a, on an iPad and tablet. Um, again, it's, it's, it's a hit and miss. Some haven't, some have. So you want to be able to enhance the ease of mining as much as you can. You want to make it as easy to mine versus a, how difficult it is. So those numbers, you want those to be as high as possible as well. And how that's calculated is, again, another algorithm, but the higher the better. Now the center numbers uh, represent the time that it takes for the mining process to recharge. So, you know, like, think of a battery on, on a drill. You have so much time where you, you drill, you drill, you drill, and then now the battery's dead. You have to now wait for it to recharge. Similar principle here, using land as a multiplier, and the two highest times that are on that are within the pool. So it's not all three cards, it's just the two highest numbers. And you can see here, if we're looking at 1120 times 1.2 is 1344 seconds. You divide it by 60, it gives you how many more, how many minutes that it will take for this sequence of cards, or as I say, of NFTs to recharge and be allowed to mine again. So we're going to now look, try to do this here in the same a uh, system in the game itself. And for that result, that gave me, as you can see, 0.7849 of, of trillium. So I didn't get one full trillium, I got a little bit more than half of a trillium, but that was the odds. Um, so this is just a little factor that you can see. So it doesn't mean just because I have land, which was some of the argument, you have land, so you should you should get this, or you have really good cards, that means the number should be high. No. Let me go back, because one thing I want to emphasize from this is that it has to do with also, at the bottom, two other variables, the randomness and chance. 
it's luck and chance that also are added to the equation. There's not an absolute, so uh, just something for you to be aware of. So now we're going to go through this process, and I'm going to try to make this the mine as fast as possible. So right now my mine is a little uh, long, and I just want to speed it up for the sake of this demonstration so that you can see, uh, let me turn off the screen, you can see what's going on. So right now my times are kind of high, and my multiplier is kind of high as well, but I have an average of my chances overall is pretty even. So, but I'm going to change everything because, like I said, I want to try to make it a little faster so you can see, again, the whole gameplay. So I'm just going to go to uh, one of my planets because, you know, hey, that's what I'm here for. I'm, I'm, I want to share it all. I want to share everything that's in place. Um, but I want to boost uh, the awareness of, of things. So as you can see, we are on the planet of Neri. It has a mine pot of 33.75. Again, you may think that's not really great. Like, yeah, it's pretty good. Sometimes it's down to 0.9 before it gets to be refilled. So you you want to scout the, this stuff out uh, before making choices. Not always about mine on your only land. Sometimes it's it's mining on another land just to try to gain some trillium. And there's if you're joining upland, we're looking hopefully to build an upland. Um, division and and we'll see if that that f pans out anytime soon. So we're gonna start here. We're gonna take a quick look. Now we we can see here we're on the planet of Neri, and randomly they will present to you uh, a, a location. The location is based on the coordinates and how much the profit owner is going to re uh, receive from your mining. So right now they're receiving 20%. So you get 80%, they get 20. Um, you might see that change. There'll be some uh, like down to five, down to seven, some down to three, some as high as 25. You you can gauge and, and, and you can determine how how you want to see if that's feasible or not. But I want to choose where I want to go because <clears throat> even though the numbers are pretty decent, which is not bad, so I'm going to keep that in mind, it's 25, 13. I want to show you what the grid is like. So you can see here, there's the terrain is different in different re regions, and I can zoom in or zoom out and and look at the map and go, okay, this is all in the grid, like a, similarly to Upland. And now, okay, what location do I want? Do I want something with the trees? Do I want something with sand? Oh, stop zooming in. That'd be nice. Some little icy areas. If you're not sure, you can always click it. Wait for it to load. It'll tell you what it is. And it'll tell you the details. Now you'll know the higher the multiplier is, then that means definitely the time could be quite high, unless you you use tools that don't have that much time. So let's try it out. I know I have pretty good rewards in the POW and my NFT, but not much luck. They are they're going to retrieve twenty percent. But now it's a matter to see okay, what tools I can have that's going to cut this time down and maybe provide something in, in the rewards factor. So, yeah, let's mine here. I'll click OK on that. It's going to update the land choice. Now I have to look at the tools choice. So I'm not going to find tools. Again, something under the numbers and find out what the time average may be. So I'm going to do that. So I know everything was around the 600. You can see that's 1100. We don't want to go there. I'm just going as low as I can. So I'm going to select. Yeah, let's click, select this one here. Every time you select, you're now changing something in the contract. So you have to click the confirmation, which I'm hope they're looking to change that arrow. which should be either OK or confirm to make it easier to, to kind of register. And then now I'm just going to change another tool. Again, something with low um, t recharge time. So yeah, let's let's see what this one does. And let's click OK again. So now I have an axe. I have 
uh, basic trillion detector, and now we're going to change this one out. And yeah, should I try for shovel? Right now, I'm kind of nullifying this if I use it because one is a zero here. My land is a zero, is a zero on the other side. So was this the best choice? As a, as you can think about it, right? It, right now, this probably even though time's really low, this may offer me absolutely nothing in terms of um, my benefits. And there's only a one here. So do I really want to risk it for a land that has a 2.5? No, nah, I don't think so. That doesn't pro provide much at all. But maybe I could do the extractor. The extractor has um, a bit more, or no, I'll do the glavid, glaver disc. The one here, one there, and the times at 300. Again, it's all about trial and error. You'll be surprised what can happen. Um, you just never know. Because again, these are the calculations that you're trying to apply the best theory to, but it doesn't mean that it, it will result with anything, trust me. Um, but you, again, it's about uh, gradually accumulating as you go. And the other thing I want to mention is that yeah, I know it will probably come up in, in, in as a thought. Can I choose three of the same tools? Yes, you can, but not in this, pl not directly on the G uh, on the, this particular interface, you have to do it through the chain. You have to go back to blocks itself and manipulate the contract to apply that. They are looking to make it easier so you can apply the same tools if you want, but right now um, it doesn't happen on the interface itself. You have to do it in chain. The second thing that's being requested, and, and again, it's something that works like anything, is the ability to um, save let's say you have a great combination and you like that combination and it seems to work you want to be able to save that as a favorite let's say and then apply it uh, maybe a different other st uh, strategic locations so those are things that are, that are coming down the pipeline so we're going to try to mine this we're going to see what a mine is so we now know if we have got the, the you know the two highest times so right now i have 420 and 300 so that's 720 times 3.5 so that's 2520 divided by 60 and I got 42 minutes which is that as high as I want for something that powerful the, sure let's let, let let's see but as I said it's about trying what what do, what would the results be then you kind of kind of major it and, and, and monitor it as you go And you can see, not that great, but high wait time. It wasn't too far off. But it doesn't mean you have to wait there. I could go back now. That's okay. That was that didn't give me the results I wanted. I could go leave that planet, or leave that location, and find something with less of a high minute, uh, timer. So here we have, we're in the dunes. The rate is a little different. And I can click here, use the same tools if I want it. I don't need to change the tools, right? But now my time is, has reduced significantly. So I'm going to save that for now because I'm going to show you now details on what can happen in f terms of shining. What had unfortunately had happened before when I was recording this, uh, uh, this audio was not great at all. So the um, shining element disappeared and I wanted to show you the shining. So what is the shining? Shining now is the ability to t enhance the cards, enhance your, it's like, uh, you know, upgrading your armor, upgrading your, your, your speed on, uh, if you make your car or your features or anything like that. That's the general view of it. It's something that every game does is like, you know, you renovate your house, so you, you you know, you bring in a, a up, updated features or, or whatnot. But because we're looking at a game that is applying a DAC and DeFi, so decentralized finance and DAC, decentralized atomic uh, communities, B shining is a term of like burning out and deflation, creating a deflationary uh, mechanism. So I shine up my card, 
but I'm also burning resources. I'm taking cards out of circulation. And that is one of the great features that can be that is being applied right now. That was just released last week. So what the shiny means is that your cards, depending on the type of card you have, can be shined up. And you'll need four cards to do that within each category. So abundance can only shine up now to gold. That's that's the that's the highest level they can ever shine. And it'll cost five hundred trillion. So I want to shine up. I have a a, bun a bunch of abundant tools and I'll you know we'll get back um, to the atomic here. So let's say I have a whole bunch of uh, tools and I'll get to the tool section. So all these shovels, they're all abundance. You can go into details. You can see here it shows the rarity. It, the, the current status is stone, so everything starts in stone. And, okay, I, if I want to, I can shine these up to the level of a gold. After that is common. The commons are like the darker gray, like I had told you earlier. Those can shine up no, only up to Stardust, but each shine will cost you 500 for gold and 1,000 for trillium. But then you have the rarities, which is the blues. Those will cost each the same four cards, but the amount of trillium increases. And epic and legend and mystical. Sorry, I forgot the mystical. I knew it was the, there was one more. The mystical, the rarest of them all. And you can see the, the amount that will t cost to shine that uh, to the highest level, which is now antimatter. When you're doing the shiny, as I said, you're deflating the, not only deflating the trillium that's being sent, so it's created a def deflationary trillium or a token, but you also deflation, deflation, create deflation NFT. I'm going to get my speech out eventually. <laughs> so, less, re less items, more scarcity, and generally equals higher val volume, higher value in turn. I think that's a great idea, and it's a fun to play. Like I said, it's all strategy. There's people right now that are mining, they have a sequence either to mine every 10, 15 minutes, <laughs> or they're mining every hour. It's a sequence of how you set up. I try to set up too, um, based on uh, day, day work or evening. Okay, I'm going to mine uh, and set this up to mine in the next four hours. And then if I'm home, I have it set to mine every, maybe every half hour or every hour, depending on, on the frequency I'm looking for and hopefully the, the returns I'm, uh, I try to achieve. Um, it, it's really s set to your schedule. You can have, and I'll say this cautiously, you can have various accounts of Atomic uh, of Wax account in order to have various mining setups. You can do that because you still have to physically do the mining yourself. What they don't have is automatic mining to discourage bots in doing an account, you still have to come in, you still have to select your cards, you still have to select your the tools, so they don't mind having the multiple accounts, because you still have to have your assets in your accounts as well, there's nothing that the bot can come in and s then dictate that, okay, let's take this particular uh, sequence and, and repeat it over and over again, because you manually have to come in and make the selections, they don't mind that you have multiple accounts. So some people do. They have two accounts going. They set their wallets up so they have the resources in place. And then eventually, or most likely, they're pulling those resources later and distributing them either to be staked or uh, put into whatever wallet they need. So you can see there's different ways of how the game can play out. And it's it's two... And let's see if we lost some volume here. It's different to everyone's style of play and really something that is, again, you can see how it's very different from Upland. 
So now, if you have you have an understanding of that, let's take a look at now some stats. So we'll get back to the mining and shining part in once in about maybe 10 more minutes. But I want to show you some stats, similar stats to what was in um, Upland, so that you can see the d dynamics here and you can see the stats. This is stats that's done from uh, EOS USA. They've cataloged the information for alien worlds, and you can see that you have data that can t tell you information about what's happened in the last hour, uh, the lifetime total miners, the sequence in, w in the last few days. You can see how things have just gradually grown and, and, and peaked at times. The change times of how the miners are working during the day, 24 hours uh, time slot and what's been moving along. Um, you can see it in the graph setting. You can see the values of what's been staked. You can look at uh, the highest stake, I believe, oh, Kavian is still the highest, at 5,600,000 trillion to date, while Magar comes in second, Nairun comes in, th no, Neri comes in, f oh, Neri comes in second. That's a surprise. The only reason I say that, because in the beginning, it was a slower build. They didn't have as many um, stakers to that planet, and now that has jumped significantly. So, I'm kind of happy. <laughs> I I own a, a land in Erie. Um, you can see the maximum mine lines uh, that's been happening overall. So it's been a an aggressive push and growth for for the game itself. Let me see what else I want to show you here. Um, to get to the Where are we here? No, that's the main, their main page. They have another feature. Oh, there we go. Here we go. This is now the subset. And as you can see, you th this is where Alien World stats can be. You want to be able to um, look at land. So instead of going to the the site here and then try to find oh where if you remember we were clicking is this a good place or is that a good place or that's if that's a good place right now you could go to the land plot or land table sorry and go to the planet say I want to go to Neri it'll show me Neri and then click around I go okay so if you're planning on on doing a particular mine okay I want something that has a, the least amount of resources you can s go around and select it and you can see it all in a s snapshot or even so you can click here so okay what's the fastest okay I got the average low number here but my you know I have a mint number if I wanted to the rarity style is a common or epic a legendary um, the commission of do I want a five percent commission? I want to pay. It's a ten percent commission. I have that choice. Um, the N NFT rate, you know, is it really really high or is it really really low? What are the the frequency and the POW? Um, the only thing they don't have is the oh there it is the charge. I knew I had the charge. Sorry, the charge time as well. Do I want a high charge? So Neri doesn't have any super high chargers. There's some. Oh yeah, they have one. That way I know if I'm looking for something that has the highest charge. So I can take that out and click it again, and you sh it will show me right there at the bottom. This is the highest charge. The mining. There's no ease of 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 calculation. My NFT rate, the commission, and the location. I could go there, and, and it's okay. That's where I'm going to go, and I don't have to worry about selecting and hunting in the map that's there. So these are some of the, the, the resources again that are built f from players to to help make the ease of the game uh, available to everybody, which is much appreciated. Uh, so you definitely, if you can, go out and mine on their their areas to to help maintain the resources that they can provide.
So let's click out of here. Um, <clears throat> and then this is now the filter for shovels or filter for infuse extractor. What are they? Um, what's in place currently? It's, I mean, it's not that they, everything's been resolved and sold. There's not a full full set. As, as new packs are being revealed, as new... Um, NFTs are being dropped and, and 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 available in circulation. These numbers change accordingly, and this is the resources that are per uh, a user or I say planet. I, I would think. So you can see this Waxel processor, one of the rarest, of being a mystical, hard to find, uh, and the avatars. And these, like I said, these are just summaries, but again, it gives you an idea of the marketplace when you want to sell it, if you want to upgrade, if you want to do, again, if you even want to do a uh, shine to it, because the shine is going to cost you not just the resources of the, uh, the card itself, but the resources of the trillium that you, you're going to use. So, like I said, if I go back to the uh, equipment, so it's a little so, so the standard shovel. There's a standard shovel that exists somewhere, but it's far more. But I'm not sure where that they have it hidden. That there's only a total of one. There's a lot more. Believe me. Okay, so we have the stats. We have the information here. So you can see it's just pulling a lot of resources and trying to compile it and make it useful for for the user to do with it, what they wish with it and how they can make it beneficial for themselves. Um, let me see what I want to show. Uh, big. And this is what I want to see here. And there was another feature, and if it's not here, let's go to home. And let's go to... Uh, it's not here. I thought it was. They had one where you could show the um, live mining, as as you would call it. But unfortunately, I think that <laughs> literally took way too much resources. It was really neat, um, but I think it it was just too too heavy uh, on on the strain on, of the calculation because it was doing. Live mining every, I think it was set to every five seconds. Uh, but it, oh, so we got it back. So it's oh yeah, it is five seconds. So there we go. So I guess they they corrected it. And you, you can just watch and you can see it display and how, how much has been mined. So again, it's again it's another way of having transparency. You can see on a particular planet. Right now we're at, at Cavian. And and the, or we're showing Cavian, but you can see also where it's at the bottom right here that it's not just Cavian, but you can see Aiki, Narun, Veli's that the, the mining pockets are 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 are, are being live and uh, and up to date as we're talking right now. We're 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 I'm I finished mining. I'm in cooldown. And you can see right now that this, the size of mining pools are happening. Someone just got 16. Um, the numbers here are, 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 are varied. Some are 0 0.2, 1.1, 0 0.6. The lowest I got the other day was 0 0.3. Or 0 0.03, or uh, some odd number like that. Not too surprised. It, it comes with the territory. You may hit a great jackpot. And other times, barely anything. So, if, you, if again, if you're questioning the doubt of the, the the validity of the game, here you can take a look and go, okay, so yeah, this is kind of average. I get it. You know, it, it, it's 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 quite scattered across the planets, across the the whole threshold. You know, you can see the the colors that represent each planet, and you can look and you go, yeah, yeah. And this is this is live. This is what's going on at, as you see it, as you watch it. 
So let's see where we stand here. And we're down to the last few seconds. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to we're going to do this mine, and then we're going to cut into uh, the shining, and then we'll show you a sh short clip to shine, and then we'll come right back, and and we'll we'll wrap it up from there. So 39 seconds, and we'll see how the shi we'll sh do a brief showing of the shining process. Uh, not so much just the sh process, but what to look out for um, when you're doing it uh, to make sure that you want to do it. Because again, as I said, it's, it is resources that you're extracting and you want to make it worth your while. So we have 10 more seconds and we're going to get there almost and we're going to try this particular one. So we had 2.2 .2 in the last um, mining, so let's see what our mining options will be. So now it's, the timer's out. I now have the signal here to mine. So we're going to mine. I know it always says that you could go back to the home screen, but by habit I just like to just wait it out. And then it's gonna, uh, now it's going to determine my mining delay. So my mining delay is not that bad, but I've increased quite a bit compared to what I had before. So I kind of doubled up. So you can see it's just a matter of just plain out of what your calculations are. And remember too, at the same time, we didn't have, when we went to this particular planet, it didn't have that much petroleum to begin with. So it's always based on not only the pool, but who mined just before me. That few seconds counts uh, quite significantly. So now we're going to take a look at shining. As I said, what that is and, and, and what it will be. So I'm going to show you this image. Just remember, this is what it is. I'm taking four cards, or four NFTs, and merging them together, and I am then paying Trillium and I'm allowing them to burn and, and create into one new one. And what we'll, I'll just, we'll cut away to that, and I'll talk over a, a previous video that was made, and then we'll come back and, and wrap up. Uh, this particular segment. So let's see you on the other side. Hi everybody. So as I was showing about the mining, we we're looking at the website now. I'm on the unpacking website and I'm going to be selecting um, a tool that will provide me the options to shine up. So this is just a re-recording. I'm just doing a voiceover uh, to clarify the error from before. So I'm selecting the tool. I'm pre-selecting shine. I'm selecting now three other identical, identical tools that allow me to shine this up. So I have to have four, including now the Trillium that's supposed to be in place. I'll click uh, shine. You know, I have to authenticate it just like we described before because on the blockchain. Once I approve it, It'll go through the whole process, and believe me, you want to have your volume down low because this is a really a uh, high volume segment. And then from there, I received this now shined tool, one grade up from stone to gold. And the difference now being primarily is the time feature, the charge time. Everything else is probably aesthetics, but for the moment, the time that's being reduced is the charge time from what it was originally to maybe 10, 15 seconds below uh, the original timeline. So now if I go in here, you can see one of the highest cards in the tooling sec section is the large uh, explosive. It has about 3,600 seconds, which is, I think, an hour. and if, if you want to use that powerful tool, you would want to be able to reduce its time as much as possible so you can use it as quickly as, as you can. So, of course, a lot of people have been trying to gather as many of these tools and shine them up so that, great, I, it's, it, I can use this more and more often rather than wait an hour each time. And depending on, like we said before, the calculations from the um, land as the, being the multiplier. So if you have a land multiplier that's really large, then imagine that. And this is now showing me that I had received the processing ring. It was now added to my inventory. And 
you know, if I want to, I can use it. It's ready to be activated. It then reduces my time in any of the mining features that I want. I hope that it was helpful there. So there you have it. As we have shown the shining and the gameplay and the stats, you get to see that there's certain similarities between Upland and Alien Worlds. So I hope you've had a great time uh, watching this segment. It's pretty long, uh, a lot of details, so <laughs> I wouldn't uh, mind or I definitely would suggest that if you have to, to rewind and go back and catch some information again. Um, we'll be going forward with, with this game as time goes on. We'll be reviewing some of the stats as we've seen them before and see if things have changed. Um, and understand that you know this is something new it's going to take a little bit of time but like anything right now there's the, the, you, we can understand there's a different shift in the dynamics now with blockchain and blockchain chain technology and where nfts are concerned so until next time which we'll be probably heading back to um upland most likely because the builds are starting and a new competition as i had mentioned earlier with just the players itself so you get to see hopefully more builds happening at the same time and in a faster rate of completion uh, so that will probably likely be the next episode i'm going to edit this and put in all the show notes so you'll have um, timelines which you can go in and pinpoint any segments that you want to watch so until then please follow and share um, send me insights send me any comments let me know what you're thinking and we'll, i'll do my best and to and try to answer your, your questions so until then, take care, stay, stay safe. Ciao.